We're going to go through the first part quickly. It's a little bit of a review. Then the second part, fractions and negative exponents, we're going to spend. That's a super important new law of exponents we're going to learn. Rational number is a number that can be expressed as a fraction or ratio. Here's your clue. Ratio is in the word rational, and also if you put an F in front of it, it says fraction in it. So if on your rise test it says, which one of these is a rational number? You're thinking of, can I write a ratio out of it, or can I make a fraction out of it, right? So if you can, it's a rational number. So one-eighth is rational, and if you divided it out, you'd get a terminating decimal, so don't be tricked. If you see a terminating decimal, all terminating decimals can be turned into a fraction. 0.5 is terminating. It's equal to 1 half. That's a ratio, so that's rational. A repeating decimal can also be turned into a rational number. If it, if it helps you remember, I think of this common one. We've memorized this one is 1 third. Well, this is a repeating decimal, and it can be turned into a rational number. So this is also a rational number, a repeating decimal. So two things. Terminating and non-terminating, if it's repeating. Are those are your rational numbers. So if you were designing a rocket booster for the space shuttle and human lives were dependent upon your calculation, would it be more accurate if you used 1 11th in your calculation or 0 .0909, which is close to 1 11th, you've just rounded because you didn't want to write all those extra digits? What do you think, Colin? Which one's more accurate? <laughs> Say you're going to multiply it by 22. Am I going to get a, a more accurate answer this way or the rounded close version of 111? Let's say my choices are a close approximation or a fraction. Samantha? The fraction because it's exact. The fraction is exact. This one's been rounded. So this is a better number to use in your calculation. So be careful of that. Don't chunk off, uh, truncate off those extra digits. OK, so 2 thirds. We're going to review how to write this as a, a decimal and a percent. So 2 divided by 3, that means we're going to go 3 into 2. Remember, the denominator goes into the numerator. 3 won't go into 2. So that's why we have to bring up the decimal and throw some zeros in there. 3 into 20 goes 6 times. That's 18. Subtract, we get 2, bring down the 0, 3 into 20 goes 6 times 18. Subtract, we bring a 2, and then I start noticing, hey, it's 2018, 2018, 2018 every time. So then I'm going to go, okay, it's going to always repeat with my 6s. So here's my decimal. It's repeating. Now I need to do a percent. Here's a cool way to do a percent. You only need two digits to start with for your percent, so I'm going to get rid of the rest. I got my two digits. Your remainder, though, becomes your numerator. What does your remainder become? Get ready? Numerator. 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 Divisor becomes the denominator. <coughs> what? Denominator. 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 So now, and I move it over twice because I'm going to times it by 100 percent to make it a percent. There's my percent. So two thirds is 66 and two thirds percent. Um, last step, it says rounded to the thousandths place. Well, we know the decimal really repeats on and on. Tens place, hundreds place, thousands place. Check the digit next to it. Is it five or more? Make it soar or fail or less. Let it rest. Are we going to soar or rest? Okay, ready? Soar. Soar. You guys are paying attention so awesome. Thank you. So we round, we sort up, and it rounds to 0.667. So you're going to have to do, on your practice set, you're going to have to give me all three forms to uh, rounded, decimal, and even percent or a fraction. So question one. How did you get the two-thirds percent? Great question. Where did the two-thirds come from? So I took my remainder, you know how it would keep going 2018, 2018, 2018? I knew since it was going to repeat, I could just stop at two. I took that remainder two and made that become the numerator. Okay, three became the denom denominator. Once you have these memorized, you can you can see, oh, it's three, 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 three. I can just make that a one third. So you can do that too. All right, so let's take 16 and two thirds percent, write it as a reduced fraction and decimal. So 
This one we're really going to have to put on our goofy caps. Percent means per 100. So I write it over 100. Percent means per 100, right? So I'm going to change that. Now I have no percent because I wrote it over 100. And I'm going to change it into an improper fraction. What? An improper, improper fraction. An improper fraction. So remember this, you do the denominator times the whole number and then you add on the 2. That's going to be 50 over 3. I still have the 100. A lot of kids this morning were forgetting their 100. They have a fraction divided by a whole number. Turn them both into a fraction. Now we can copy, dot, flip. So copy the top, change the division to a dot, and then flip the denominator. That makes it really nice to calculate. Because the 50 and 100 gives me 1 6. So the equivalent fraction is 1 over 6. That's what 16 and 2 thirds percent it really is, is 1 6. So if I said 16 and 2 thirds percent of all students today had black socks, I could say 1 out of 6 students had black socks. It means the same thing. Okay. Uh, we've got our fraction now. We need a decimal. How do we turn this into a decimal? I divide. We're going to do it up high. Six into the numerator. It won't go, so we add on the zeros. It'll go once into ten. Six. Subtract four. Bring down the zero. It'll go six times into forty. Thirty-six. We subtract. We get four. We bring down another zero. Oh. Six again. Thirty-six. Subtract. We get four. Bring down another zero. And we see this pattern, right? Uh, we need a decimal number. It didn't ask for a percent. We already have the percent. So my decimal would be one six with a rep. Okay. Any questions? Oh my god. Great question. I took three and I multiplied it by the sixteen, and then I added that to the two. Yeah. Remember that we haven't done it for a couple months, but we turned that mixed number into an improper. We're gonna skip that. If I needed to find out 41 and two-thirds percent of a whole number, in this case 1,260, I need to change the percent. Remember, we're not allowed to multiply, of means times. We're not allowed to multiply a percent, so I have to change the percent into either a decimal or a fraction. Let's change it to a fraction. That would be easier. 41 and two-thirds. You guys are listening, by the way. It's so good. My fourth period, I told them they acted like they already knew it. I said, okay, we'll try it on your own. No one could do it. Let's change it to a percent. Percent means what? Get ready? Per 100. Per 100. So there's our per 100. We're going to times that. Well, before we times it by 1260, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's do that trick where we multiply and then add. So 3 times 41 is 123 plus 2, 125. Keep the denominator the same, over 100. Make it a fraction. Copy dot flip. <coughs> Copy the top. Change it to a dot, flip it. So now we think, oh, hey, we can work with these hundreds and 125. There's a common factor of, I think, quarters. You see the quarters in here, buck 25 and a buck. There's four quarters in a dollar, five quarters in a buck 25. So I end up with five on top, three times four is 12 on the bottom. Woo! <sighs> so I'm tired already. So the equivalent fraction is 5 twelfths. So I really just need to find 5 twelfths of 1260. Of means times. So let's clean that up. Do you guys see this 12 into 1260? It's going to go once, then i got to move over a digit to so make a space for another zero, and then it'll go 5 times. So this is going to go 105. 5 times 105, 525. Does it seem about right? 41% of 1260. Well, if I did 50% of 1260, that's half. That'd be about 630. And I'm a little bit less than 50%. So I'm a little bit less than 630, so it makes sense. Give me a nod if this process made sense, if you understood it as we were watching it. It's one thing to watch. Okay, good. One, you're watching it, it makes sense. You'll need to try it on your own to make sure that you can do it on your own. All right, this is part two of the lesson. This is where we get to that cool new law of exponents for fractions when they're negative, when the exponent is negative. Okay, so review. We've got x to the negative n. We already learned the law of exponents when they're negative. Who can remind us what the law says? Jasmine? Instead of 
True, if we had a digit, but we don't have a, we don't have any digits to work with. We just have a variable. Can I rewrite the variable with a positive exponent? What were you going to say, Ethan? You put, a, put x to the n over, so 1 over x to the n. 1 over x to the n. So if you put in the denominator, the exponent turns positive. Give me a nod if you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. Remember? Spencer remembers with his eyes and his head and chin. Okay, Annika has her eyebrows remembering. Okay, good. So this would become 1 over 3 to the positive 2. Remember, I put it in the denominator, change the x to positive, 1, 9. Okay. So one more piece to remember. Who's heard of the word reciprocal before? Raise your hand if you've heard reciprocal. Most of you. What is the reciprocal? Spencer? Um, reciprocal is when you can, um, it's basically like with that x, y, um, you would find the way to make that equal 1. You would find the way to make it equal one. So if what would you times it by to make it equal one? I like um, your description. Um, the way I do it is I flip it over, so it'd be x um, over y um, times y over x would equal one. Perfect. That is a very mathematical way to describe it. What would turn it into one? You would have to flip it upside down, right? And then if you multiply it, you would get one. <coughs> so just think of the reciprocal as the flipped version of the fraction. So we're going to use this law and this law, we're going to combine them to a new law. x over y to the negative exponent, the answer is the reciprocal to the positive exponent. Alright, that's kind of a shortcut. I just told you what it equals. I didn't explain why or how it works, but that's the short answer. Your, your, if you have a negative exponent, it's equivalent to the reciprocal to the negative exponent. So first, take the reciprocal. What's first? Get ready. Take, take the, the reciprocal. reciprocal. Good. Take the reciprocal. Next, change the sign on your exponent. What's the next step? Get ready. Change, change the, the sign, sign on your exponent. exponent. Very good. So I would write that law in your notes. You need 10 seconds to write that, and then we're going to try a practice problem. Then you guys have the next practice problem. And I don't have a poster on that. I should. As soon as you're looking back at me, I'll know you're ready. Jasmine's ready. Lucy's ready. Rachel's ready. Lucy's ready. There's Michelle. Caleb. Okay, let's go. Here we got one half to the negative third. The rule says take the reciprocal. What do we take? Get ready? Reciprocal. Reciprocal would be two over one, and then it says to change the sign on my exponent, so we change it to be positive. So really, I have two over one, which is just two cubed, which is eight. You get to do the next one. It is nine fourths to the negative 2 exponent. So remember, your first step is to take the reciprocal. Your second step is to change the exponent. As soon as you've got it, put your pencil in the air. Oh, second one right here. Oh, well, you flip it upside down so it's 4 over 9, and then you change it to uh, the second, not the negative second. Very good. Take the reciprocal, change the sign. Then what? Um, you would multiply 4 ninths by 4 ninths, which would give you 16. Very good. All morning I've been seeing uh, eights and eighteens, so be careful. Joseph, I like how he said it. He said times four nights, times four nights. And then that will help you remember when you see them both. Oh yeah, it's four times four, nine times nine. You can leave it fraction form. If it won't cross cancel here, it won't reduce here. There's another tip for you. So that's our final answer. Okay, any questions? Alright, let's get to the practice set. You guys are on page 432. Take a stand-up break.